up in all those parking shacks. shacks. Good evening and welcome to the December 30th meeting of the Hampton Board of Selectmen. Please stand and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to introduce the board. To my far left, Selectman Mike Pierce. To my immediate left, Selectman Phil Bean. To my far right, Selectman Mike Fluff. To his left, Selectman Mary Louise Woolsey. To my immediate right, Town Manager Fred Welch, and I'm Selectman Dick Nichols. The um, first item on the agenda is a recognition of service um, to Warren uh, Bambury. Warren, could you uh, come up? Resolution in recognition of service. Whereas Warren Bambury has served the town of the people of the town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty as a representative to the Seacoast and Rockingham Planning Commissions for 20 years, and whereas he has served with distinction, providing guidance and leadership during his tenure as a faithful appointed official, and whereas he has served the town above and beyond the call of duty on many occasions, often at personal sacrifice, be it resolved that the selectmen and the citizens of the town of Hampton make it known their appreciation for the services Warren Bainbury has rendered to the town of Hampton. Whereunto we have set our hands in this seal this 30th day of December and the year of our Lord 2013 and of the 375th year of the founding of the town of Hampton, the 332nd year of the founding of New Hampshire and the 237th year of the independence of the United States of America. Thank you, Warren. You did all that? <laughs> <laughs> you did. I guess you did. Thank you, Warren. You did that on purpose to coincide with the 375th anniversary. That was great timing. <laughs> Thank you, Warren. <laughs> okay, public comment period. Would anyone from the public wish to comment? Arthur? <laughs> comments. First one, you get a letter from the chairman of the Heritage Commission <coughs> resigning. Nothing to do since the okay of demolition permits was found to be inconsistent with their statutory uh, duties and suggested that you petition town meeting to Sunset, the Heritage Commission. I think the bigger problem is the demolition ordinance, which the selectmen pass, and they don't have any authority to pass a building code, which that is. Uh, town meeting is the one that passes such a ordinance. Second thing is, a re <coughs> I'm going to revisit the seawall off uh, Norris Lane. The only things that I've been able to get out of the public meeting of your of this board is that there's going to be like six house lots joined with a seawall, one of which has been built recently, which went over into somebody else's frontage, unplanned, I guess. Uh, and that you're going to use 4114A to lease land for the encumbrance onto the town beach. This isn't an empty lot like the old town office, unused. This is a public beach. And there should be an outrage that any part of it is going to take away from the public. And I believe that only a town meeting can do that because they, they passed in 75 an ordinance. Right. They petitioned town meeting actually <laughs> themselves to set the parameters of what they can lease because they were upset with the NAMI Royal parking lot that came out of the blue <coughs> on Brown Avenue Extension the year before. And that, that says that the selectmen only have the authority to lease property here to for leased. 
You find it in your code book, by the way, <coughs> the lease land in the index. <coughs> Uh, now, we in the 90s passed a relatively new state law giving us an enabling statute giving this selectman authority to buy or sell land or lease land by having two public hearings and somebody's agreed they can petition a special town meeting with 50 signatures. If you go ahead with this 4114A, <coughs> you may want to budget more money for a special town meeting or two because this is completely off the wall that you're going to lease land on a public beach. The seawall that was already built or rebuilt didn't have a variance to go across two private lot, a private lot line from one house lot to another. And that's in the jurisdiction of the zoning board. They have done that before, given authority to build over a lot line. <coughs> the deed restrictions there, are, you can't build Bill within seven feet of any boundary line, town X town lease land, and about half of the half of the lots on Northeast Lane are non-resident owned. <coughs> uh, so, and of course, the town uh, meeting has the authority to lift those deed, deed restrictions. So, I think you're going to run into some problems also with. What I heard that you're going to combine that beach property the town owns with the individual house lots and have one figure. They're going to increase the valuation of the land to include the town. It's got, it's got to be a separate lot. You can't combine town land with private land and come up with one valuation. And if you do put lots in front of those beachfront <coughs> house lots, will that decrease the value of the land that no longer has beach frontage? Now that's a possibility for the assessor. So, and, and you didn't discuss anything about what are you going to charge for rent. Under 4114A, you can lease up to five years, which of course this is going to be more or less permanent. Uh, town meeting is given lease land 20 years. So I think there's a lot of things that have to be discussed in this from what I hear in the public meeting. Uh, and whether you've discussed them or not with your attorney. I know you've met many, many times with your attorney after your <coughs> Monday night meetings. Uh, so it's something to think about, and it's it's sort of unprecedented, really, that we're going to add land to a lot from a public beach. So I hope you think that over again and come up with something that's uh, that goes to the legislative body. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Arthur. <coughs> Anybody else from the public? Seeing none. Announcements and community calendar. Mike? No, thank you. Bill? Yeah, I'd like to congratulate uh, a young uh, Hampton man who is now a uh, Seabrook police officer. Uh, just graduated from the police academy, uh, Daniel Henderson. So I'd like to, on behalf of the board, uh, wish him congratulations. And good luck over in Seabrook. Thank you. Okay. Mike? No, I'll stop. Mary Louise? Uh, my usual discussion on waste pickup. Uh, we have the New Year's holiday on Wednesday. That means that the normal Wednesday pickups will be pushed to Thursday. The normal Thursday pickups will be pushed to Friday. And if we have the storm that they're starting to talk about um, <laughs> on Thursday and Friday, all bets are off. <laughs> but no waste pickup on Wednesday. So everybody just check the town website and Channel 22 for any updates. Okay. Um, William Lowney. One of our uh, DPW employees yep. has achieved the status of Rhodes Scholar Two. That's R O A D S Scholar Two, as well as the next level of Senior Rhodes Scholar. Um, this is in conjunction with the Technology Transfer Center at the University of New Hampshire. Senior Rhodes Scholar is the third achievement level of the four levels in the Rhodes Scholar program. 
Uh, an individual must typically attend 15 one-day workshops to reach the level Bill has completed. So congratulations to Bill on becoming a Rhodes Scholar. Great. First appointment, um, only appointment, Mike Schwotzer, final 2013 encumbrance approval. Mike. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, earlier I passed out a uh, listing of the encumbrances for 2013 and attached to it is actually the listing of all the POs. So therefore, everything that's in this package has got a legitimate PO cut to a vendor with all the backup. Um, to, to arrive at the, the number I'm using, uh, you start out with the grand total of 561000 then you subtract off the other funds. There's Fund 24, which is the re Recreation Revolver, EMS, and Fire Station, and that brings you to $375,000. Um, that's really what we're dealing with in regards to the general fund. Last year that number was 294, so it is a bit higher, and you can see down below I've given you some of the definition. But also to that you must add um, the warrant articles that are going to be carried over. Mm -hmm. And with that we have warrant article 12-24, that's from 2012. The Parks and Rec infrastructure, there has been a contract issued at 49.2. The grist mill upgrade it's a non-lapsing. That's a 26, 28,006. The wastewater I and I study also non-lapsing. I'm asking for 48,7. Now I have an asterisk, and down below you'll see that also included in the POs is another 44,000. So basically, you've got 99,000 dollars going and being held for the I and I study. And lastly, on the warrant articles is the wastewater treatment facilities study at 90,000. Add the two together and you come up with $592,000, which is what I'm asking the board to approve uh, at this time. This, to me, is the worst case scenario. Um, this, these numbers were basically generated today. I haven't had complete time to review, and as of course, uh, we will be looking at them as we go out through, through the, um, the end of the year close. One of the things, if you look down below on the highlighted items, you're going to find several items that will look familiar because these are ones that were asked um, by the Public Works, the Fire Department, mm -hmm. and PD. You'll see they pop up. Yep. The one that I look at right now is towards the bottom, which is the Public Works chemicals at $43,000. I believe that that one will get trimmed down. So that number will be reviewed. Um, so I can account for 323000 The difference is 52 of which as I mentioned before, 45,000 is the open PO yeah. on that warrant article. So really, you've got you've got up, there's 8,000 of little stuff. So um, this is to meet the requirements of the RSA in regards to year-end encumbrances that has to be done before the end of the year. It needs to be done by a board vote, and then we can adjust it as we go out through um, when I'm doing the close. So therefore, I would ask your indulgence and a motion to the encumber for 2013 the number of $592,574.29. I will so move it, Mr. Chairman. I have a second. Turn. Turn. Discussion? Questions? I've got a few, Mike. Go ahead. Um, Please. <laughs> wastewater treatment plant facility studies that's the entire amount of the 2013 warrant article. That's correct. Nothing has been spent and there were no POs cut on that item specifically. Right. On the I and I study, um, what was the total of the warrant article and what was the uh, bid? Um, I believe the warrant article was $100,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right yeah. now there's a PO open for 44.8. And then this is the differential that's left over, i.e. would be under the available and column. That differential is still available, non-lapsing, should we? Mm -hmm. That's correct. To that's correct. That. Um, as far as the list below that, which I think you, um, it's got a heading of highlighted items, I think you referred to as general fund that totals 323, 391. Um, last week when we talked about this, we had two numbers. If, 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 if I looked at, as I recall, if I looked at the November financial report that was 151,000 yep. um, that was currently in the open PO column, and then you had a um, list which was predominantly the three 
large departments that was 196,000 or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. Then we added to that the general code, 20,000 or whatever. Um, I would presume some of those POs have been paid um, or whatever, because if I add up everything I just said, 151 plus 196 plus the 20, I come to 367,000, yet this is 323. So what is the difference? I, I'm not saying specifically item by no, item. No, but what happens is the, the POs is, are a, a moving target. Right. So in essence, mm -hmm. you had you could have had some open POs that, uh, and that have been paid, so therefore it knocks it off the list, yeah. and then we did add as I uh, from the list uh, that was talked about. Now, one of the items that you were mentioning and including in the uh, amount of money, um, the Public Works asked for $125,000. And there was a $26,000 SALT number. Yep. Yeah, we okay. negated that one. So okay. that brought it down yeah. to $99,000. Okay. Because there was $28,000 still left in their budget for SALT. Yeah. So therefore, we had them, they needed SALT. And so we had them buy it off of this year. So that's not an encumbrance. That'll be a, a, a December expense. It's a December expense, no encumbrance for the SALT. So therefore, um, we will pay for what we receive through December 31st. And there's no encumbrance for salt going forward. Okay. So there's there's twenty five twenty six thousand that get kicked out. Yep. Okay. I get that. A um, couple of additional items that have been discussed. One of which was last week was potentially encumbering an amount of money um, towards parking lot signs, and, and as a mm -hmm. result of that, we we eliminated the uh, warrant article associated with signs. Is that reflected yes. in here? Okay. Yes. And that was a late uh, wreck I saw today, and then we got it into the system. I just didn't probably pick it up on this one. Okay. It's, but that it's, is still it's, in it. As far as I know, it's in there. Okay. One, one question I have, and it, it, it dawned on me after last week's meeting, is there was or is or whatever five or six thousand dollars unspent in the parking lot account. But I think at one point, going back a month or two ago, we had said, geez, let's use that to pay for the bathroom mm -hmm. in the Church Street. Then last week we said, "Hey, let's use that to pay for the signs." Have right. we have we used that twice? What is there? You know, it's really the bathroom. <laughs> well, we're strictly once. We haven't bought the bathroom. Bathroom. But the the use. parking lot signs is on page two, slightly through the middle at five thousand sixty-five. Right. Obviously, there's some other things going on with the Church Street lot. So right. basically, then any expenditure on bathrooms um, in 2013 at Church Street is not going to happen then? Is that correct? Correct, because we don't have any permission to do any right. work. Right, so okay. We couldn't make the end of the year. I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, very I good. I have one quick question that occurred to me as I'm looking at this. On the fire department, you've got the gear washer, but did the chief, and I'm not positive, not recommend uh, the drying uh, accessory? Because you, you, you really should have both. Because they have both are in the um, <coughs> uh, decon room yeah. and the uptown station, but the beach station should be equipped similarly. Uh, my just recollection is that that the chief asked for both of those. Which yeah, I, what the ch the chief whatever he asked for right, he received. That's, that's what I was. I'm just say. trying to find it for you. Because that would take priority for me to get those two pieces of equipment down at the beach station. He, he's got, I believe, just based on the amounts, Mike. I recall our discussion. The amounts were a little over forty thousand dollars in fire. Mm -hmm. And what you've got listed here. But I'm looking at um, gear wa uh, gear wa G E A R yeah, gear, gear washer at 99 mm -hmm. and gear dryer at 6900 and that's on page four about the middle. Page four. Oh, that's already been purchased. Yes. No. no. Purchase no. order. Is it purchase order? order. Oh. order has been placed. Is it? Ooh, page four. I'm. It. It's under 010-024-4220-27400. Oh, down here. Yep. Winch. Base under for oh, Staber gear drying machine. There you go. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. I didn't list out everything. I okay. tried to give I you I appreciate idea. that. I just no, want to make sure fires. <laughs> basically, every, everything on the list except for salt. Okay. Yeah, I agree that, with that. that. Yeah. I agree with that. I have another question, Ben. You brought up Mr. Chairman the signs. So what is she going to do with the signs? Is she going to buy 10 or 12 or 2 or what? <laughs> I think three, one for each parking lot. That's my impression. I have to go back and look at the rec. Because we don't want to pay $10,000 a piece for them. So how much no, money no, are we going to pay? 5000 total for three. For three? Okay. Thank you. Okay, any further questions or all in favor? 
Thank you very Unanimous. much. Thank you, Mike. Yep. Have a happy Mike, New Year. Mike, I think we determined that we're all set on the default um, budget, yeah. the yes. motion thing, or whatever. Yes. There's no yep. question yep. on we're, that. We're fine on that one. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thanks. See you next year. That'll happy. make you happy. Happy New Year. <laughs> 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 Get rid of us for a little bit. <laughs> okay. He's a brave man. Approval of minutes from December 16th. Page one. Page two. Page three. Page three, fourth paragraph, paragraph down, states um, outside entertainment ceasing. It should be ceasing, C-E-A-S-I-N-G. Um, next line down says Bod, Lad, B-O-D, it's Bob, B-O-D, Lad. <coughs> Four. Page five. Six. six, yes, I have a problem on page six. Right before uh, the Roman numeral four, the paragraph right above it, it says, Sleckman Pierce school system being mandated by law and trash pickup is not. That part's okay. This disagrees with looking at this way. That's sort of ambiguous, but it's a carryover from an earlier conversation. But then it says, they are in the business of providing services. That is truly ambiguous. It says that town in the, mm -hmm. is in business to provide services. Okay, so that clears it up a little bit. So they should become the town. The town is. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Page seven. Page eight. Page nine. Yes, Mr. Chairman, on the second paragraph, um, after the uh, semicolon, talking about liability, oh, uh, issues, liability concerns can be addressed in the lease. What will happen to the, it's rip rap, R-I-P-R-A-P. Right. That's right. Not rift raft, <laughs> but it was a good creative thought. I like rip raft myself. <laughs> I, I had to Google that at one point. <laughs> okay. Um, on that same page, just above Roman numeral eight, um, that ends. Chairman Nichols suggested that they work with the town manager and town attorney on this. Um, I believe the way we left it is the request was taken under advisement by the board and um, Mr. Welch anticipated coming back to the board by, I think you mentioned date, I don't remember, not necessarily a specific date, but I don't remember what it was, but I think you mentioned the time frame. Uh, it was a couple of weeks at the most, yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't, don't remember at this point either. Yeah. yeah, I'd have to read the thing to refresh my mind. Um, prior to the end of January, is that yes, fair? Yes, yeah. okay. <coughs> okay, but I, I believe we did not make a decision one way or the other. We right. under advisement. Right. Why not? Okay. We kicked it upstairs. Page ten. <laughs> page eleven. Page twelve. Page thirteen. I will make a motion to approve the minutes. Of December 16th as amended. Second. Seconded by Mike Pierce. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, the work continues on the Church Street pump station. The contractor has been busy installing the HVAC systems within the building, and the exterior and gable end louvers have been installed. Wow. So we're, we're progressing there. They're working very hard to finish up the inside. Good. The State Department of Resources and Economic Development has announced an open house <laughs> for the Seashell Complex on New Year's Eve. They will be serving free of charge coffee and hot chocolate and cookies. Uh, the public is invited to come in and tour the facility and, and, uh, and certainly uh, keep warm and, and, and have some of those tasty things. And also to watch the fireworks on New Year's Eve from inside. Do we know the time, Fred, that the fireworks? They didn't give me the time. That was uh, the um, village district. The open, the open house is from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. The fireworks are scheduled for 8 o'clock. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. Where did you find that little tidbit? On uh, paper. <laughs> actually, no, when I saw this, yeah, that was yeah. my question. What time are they? Yeah. So I went looking in the paper. Yeah. Uh, oh, good. Thank they you. actually called to give us the information, but they didn't give us all, to it, all yeah. of it to us. So. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder that the final date for the submission of petition warrant articles is January 14th at 5 p.m. in the Selectman's office. Mr. Chairman, we received a, and I believe for those folks who have been watching the website, and if you want to watch the Public Works website, which I, I suggest you do, mm -hmm. 
Uh, Public Works has announced that beginning on January 6th and ending March 29th, there will be a change in the collection schedule of solid waste. And I'm going to lead a re read a list of streets. And I'm, the reason I'm suggesting going to the website, particularly the Public Works website, is because it, it doesn't rotate. People, once they start looking at the town website, if they don't click on it, it, it will move on. Mm -hmm. And you'll probably miss what's there. Well, not all the streets are on there, Fred. Well, all the streets of Public Works has told me they're going to get changed are here. Uh, okay. Okay. And, and that's why I'm going to read them because I want people to go on and find out when they're assigned because this works for Mondays, Tuesdays, uh, Wednesdays, no. and Thursdays for trash pickup. And some of these, these times have been changed. Acorn, Ancient Highway, Anne's Lane and Terrace, Barber Road, Bayberry Road, Beach Plum Way, Bear Path, Beatrice, Belmont, Beery, Blake, Briar, uh, Cogger, Cranberry, Curtis, Cusick, Dakota, Dalton, Dearborn, Downer, Emory, Fairfield, Fox, George, Glen, Gray, Great Gate, Higgins, Hobbs, Holman, Humstead, Huckleberry, Hunter, James, Janet, Juniper, Katie, Keene, Lafayette, Lancaster, Linden Lane, Little River Road, Mace Road, Middle Road, Milburn Avenue, Mill Road, Mill Road North of High Street, that's, excuse me, Mill Road Lane and Mill Road North of High Street, Moccasin, Mohawk, Muncie, Naves, Narcissian, Noel, Northeast, North Shore East, North Shore West, uh, Norton, Ocean Boulevard north of High Street, Palmer, Parr, Pawnee, Philbrick, Post, Quinlan, Raymond, Reddington, Ridgeview, Robin, Ruth, Scott, Seaview, Shaw, Sherburn, Sicard, Smith, Stickney, Taylor, Thompson, Toby, Toppin, Tower, Tuck, Vanderpool, Ward, Wayside Farm, Wild Rose, Willow, Woodland, and Yetton. And that'll be repeated, of course, as this thing is played over and over again. If you live on any of those streets, please go to the Public Works website and see when your trash collection is. The Winter Trash Collection Day is for your home. That's starting January 6th. That's a Monday. Payman and Lane is not on there. And just, just so the residents don't get too excited, it's not Beery, it's Byrie. Uh, Byrie. 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 <laughs> I don't yeah. want to. Reading through all those names, yeah. I just have to run together. I don't want the public getting all excited out there. <laughs> so is there some um, <laughs> ulterior motive for all this rearranging? They're trying to uh, even out the routes. Okay. So they'll be more efficient and more effective. Okay. And, and they're trying this for three months to see whether it works. Okay. Uh, they've gone and they've sort of sketched out all the routes and they have in fact um, put recording devices on all the trucks as they as they go on around town to find out exactly how long it takes mm -hmm. to do a route and uh, have tried to figure out what would happen if they remove these streets and put them over here and and so forth okay uh, to, to level out the work that's being done yeah. and they're hoping that this will in fact uh, get the work done more efficiently and more effectively uh, and they'll actually have time left over so some of these people can do work on the highway. Uh oh. So um, if that should happen. Fred, so if your street is not listed on there then you, it stays as is? It stays as is. There are okay. no changes no to the change. streets no that are change. not listed is okay. my understanding. When I um, looked at the website over the weekend um, there was both um, this information, this notice, which mm -hmm. was on the home page, and you could get to from a link yeah. there. Right. And then what I also did was went to the um, Public Works page on the website, yeah. and I had what appeared to be some differences between the two. I happened to pick a street that a friend of mine lives mm -hmm. on or whatever, just to kind of let her know and whatever. And it appeared to me that what was on the Public Works website did not represent the change mm -hmm. as of... Um, January 6th. Okay. So this was forwarded by Public Works today. Right, but what I'm saying is there's two locations on the website. The yeah. the link on the home yeah, page, right. which is what gets you to this. And then on the Public Works site, there's the entire list, not just the streets oh. that have changed, oh. okay? But all whatever the number is, oh. 500 streets or whatever. 
What I'm saying is it appeared to me, I looked quickly, yeah. okay, but it appeared to me like the entire list mm -hmm. on the Public Works website did not reflect the changes as of, of January 6th. You're correct, and this list was added today to the Public Works website, so there should be two lists on there, the original list plus this short list. Okay. I would just suggest that by, say, Friday of this week, that the old list that is no longer accurate of all of, of the streets be, eliminated. be either, I don't know that you can eliminate it because other people, you know, somebody moves into town, you want to be able to look up and see what day you At least make them coincide. Right. Yeah. It, it, to update the, the list of 500, I guess what I'm saying, should be updated by the end of this week to reflect these changes okay. so that there's consistency and they're both right. accurate going forward. Now so. that list was put as flyers in the carts on right. orange paper. I mean, I not, got not one Not necessarily. Stuck in I, I picked well, on... Well, they were stuck in my cart. Yeah, you, I, you I, got I, one. I picked on yeah. my friend who happens to live on Emory and one right. of the streets that changed. And, and she, did, she did not get one and this particular individual is not somebody who would miss anything yeah. no, but it's <laughs> like a little that. confusing because the, those were passed out in some areas I don't know what areas but they were certainly passed out on Little River Road and stuck in our recycling I mean, cards. Nick, so. Nick Reed is here and perhaps we could solicit him you know maybe covering that in the newspaper that there are changes starting next week and maybe Fred somebody could make sure that the patch is uh, is aware of that as well. I'll give him this list before he leaves tonight so he, so he can have the list too. Let me give that to him. Don't mess up lists, the streets, Nick, or you're all going to be in trouble. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> okay. Um, we all set on that one then? Yep. Any uh, other questions for Fred in his report or whatever? No. Um, I just have one. Arthur brought up the issue of the Heritage Commission. I noticed in the minutes that we were going to send a um, memo to the all of the Heritage Commission mm -hmm. members just asking for feedback from them yeah. Yeah. as far as the feedback we've got from uh, Sue Irwin. Has, right. has that I don't believe that's been done. Okay. It's sitting on the desk to be done. Okay. Uh, we can I get that I out one anyway. other point if you want to, if you excuse me for a second, Mr. Chairman, nothing to do with the uh, trash, but you're talking about the New Year's Eve uh, thing from the state. Yes. The village districts always also doing the same thing. Oh. They announced that they were going to do that at their last meeting. That's wonderful. Good. Okay. Anything else, Fred, on the town manager's report? No, sir. Okay. We're trying to get people to come down and watch the fireworks. 2014 warrant articles. Okay. Um, some information which the board and the public may find of, of interest that just struck me when I started looking at this on, on Saturday. I was curious, what is the total number of warrant articles and how does it compare with recent history? <coughs> Um, as you can see at this point, we've got 37 more articles on the list. There could be some other petition ed additions. 2012 was 41, 2011 was 45, 2010 was 41, mm. 2009 right was 51, yeah. and 2008 was 73. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was you may ridiculous. Yeah, I think was. everybody that yeah. was around remembers right. the 73. That's 2008 right. and how late that um, right. that meeting went. Oh, um, but one second to Richard. Sure. Um, I talked to Warren Mackinson, who was a bookkeeper for the trustees of the trust funds, and he inquired about the article to um, to repeal the fire capital reserve fund. That's the one we caught last year, because they have been listing it on their MS9. But if that goes through, then they can drop that particular fund. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to confirm. I, I promised him that we do have an article on the warrant. We do. Okay. Um, just going through, and if I hit an, basically the way we would be doing it, if I hit an article that you want to bring something up on a prior one, please speak up, and then we'll go to where I was picking up. Article 8, the budget, I would um, simply comment that the default budget number um, can be changed based on our approval last mm -hmm. week yes, from 25686799 yeah. to 25614509, and obviously at some point the based on the budget committee and public hearing yep. um, operating will, will, will change. Uh, Article 9, this is the first time we've seen this, the uh, draft of the SEA, um, mm -hmm. CBA yep. um, looks fine to me. Mike and I have gone over the numbers on this off and on. The, the financial numbers look, look fine to me. And I would just add, for Mark's benefit, I've asked Wanda to just look at this uh, as mm -hmm. a, you know, just kind of a final, um, you know, all of these, all of the CBAs, whatever. But at any rate, right. that looked fine to me. 
I have um, a quick question on that. Yep. We've ratified, publicly ratified the SEA contract, yep. but now we've ratified the two police association yep. sergeants and officers contracts. What about the other three? Are we not? There's a couple of, for, first of all, we had, um, we had a little bit of a problem, not that it was a problem, getting confirmation from the um, individual representing the Teamsters that the hard copy of this, the TA that we okay. had sent them mm -hmm. was, was fine, okay? We actually got that today. It wasn't that there were any issues or whatever. Right. It was just a matter of, of somebody's business. There are also two fairly minor issues that the board is aware of and, and, mm -hmm. and we've discussed that are being discussed um, between Matt Upton and the individual Rick Lawton that represents the Teamsters mm -hmm. um, as of today. Um, and I indicated to, to Matt, Mark is in the loop and Wanda is in the loop that we really need to get that, um, those resolved so that we get a hard copy of the TA to the selectmen by Thursday Good. and get it on, my goal would be to yeah. get it on next um, mm -hmm. Monday's uh, meeting. The final is, is the two fire. One question <coughs> that I've asked that I haven't got an answer to as of yet, I've asked it of, of, of Matt Upton and a couple of other people, is um, has the, have the two fire unions, 2664 and 3017, has the membership met and, and voted to accept or reject the fact finders report? Mm -hmm. So in terms of where we go with that, I'm waiting for some feedback. You that. need a correction there because it's 3017, yeah, I believe. Yeah, right, We've got yeah. 3717. On the front page. Oh, yep. okay. See okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Thirty yeah. seventeen. Right. right. Yep. I agree. Um, at any rate, um, the police sergeants. Um, all the numbers look good. I read it. I'm fine with it. I asked Wanda to do a final review of it. Um, one comment I would make is that the newspapers reported, um, based on when I went over that last week, a thirty percent adjustment to the sergeant's wage scale. It was actually a 30 cent uh, adjustment. 30 cent. And, and I think that was actually, I, 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 looked, I went back, I looked at the video, I think that was on me as opposed to on the newspapers. But it was uh, an addiction? Yeah, <laughs> yeah yes. it, uh, wow. I said 30% I said per hour, which makes no sense yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. But at any rate, just to clarify, okay. it was 30 cents per hour, um, which is less than 1% on average, not 30%, whatever. Anyway, the, I felt the sergeants looked fine. Um, police officers, Article 11, the CBA draft, um, same thing. Numbers all look fine. Mike had done the numbers. We've already voted to ratify the yep. first three anyway. But what we're talking about is the Warren article yeah. and reviewing that. Yeah. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, those three that are on the list here, yeah. I don't think the selectmen Absolutely. need to, Good. you know, there may be some wiggling of, of language by legal or, mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, but I don't think the selectmen need to, I think we can consider that done, at least that's Excellent. my feeling. Um, let's see, I already talked about the Teamsters and the firefighters. The firefighters, now we're waiting for them to decide if they're going to accept a... I don't know if they've actually met or not, Mike. Okay. That's what I'm trying to okay. find out. On hold. And we're just waiting for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And they may have met, they may not have met. I, I asked the question last Friday, I asked a couple of people, and basically nobody knew. Right? Okay. Yeah, so. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Moving along. I have a quick question. I'm, I'm cool through 24 except for one really quick question on 17 that I need to ask Mark, actually. Okay. 17? Yeah. Well, in 16 on the High Street culvert, Mark, you have language um, that says this article is contingent upon receiving at least 87500 in offsetting revenues. Can that be inserted into the DPW equipment replacement as well? Will we get a figure from Keith on what the um, trade-in value would be? Or do you think that's not necessary? Uh, I thought that's sort of in a different category. Right. Okay. Uh, I just happened I to notice that, so I thought I'd bring it yeah, up. Yeah, I, I did promise you and still intend to <coughs> ask uh, ERA about... Uh, what can be put in as to the effect of trade in money. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and on the other hand, I don't know as it's contingent on a okay. right. amount of yeah. trade in. Okay. Because we just intended to have a 
line once Keith gets the figure for the amount they're willing to give us right. in trade. Okay. I know it's a little little different type of article. Sure. Okay. Um, article 21, we did get a... 10,000, was it? Yeah, that, that's the one that's 90,000 with the lights or whatever. It was, oh, yeah, um, I believe it was an email. Um, <coughs> yeah. That gave a, a quote and a, and, a, and, a, and a breakdown, and essentially, um, where 80 or 85,000 of the 90,000 comes from is the lights. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, what it looks like we're doing is. is um, completely replacing the whole light system, including the getting oh. rid of the, the telephone pole type, you know, creosote wood yeah. poles and yeah. putting in galvanized steel poles and mm -hmm. precast concrete and whatever. And do we have any idea how frequently that field is used at night? I literally have no idea. And is it? I, I can't tell you. Off I, I don't know, but my guess is probably quite a bit yes. during the season. I think the question that I have, I, I'll be honest with you, I've got mixed emotions on this, yeah. is is uh, what we're basically doing is is completely. Re I, I suspect that the replacement of the poles is is probably the the, the biggest the, the biggest of the whole thing. Yeah. Um. You know. I mean. I don't know that for a fact or whatever, but. You know, you look at wiring and light fixtures. I think currently, it's true. currently there's either eight or yeah. nine, yeah. you know, fixtures there. I just wonder if, you know, we really need an eighty thousand dollar solution when a yeah. I'm just making up numbers, but where a twenty five thousand dollar solution that makes yeah. use of the existing poles might be better. The other thing that I can't tell from this is is that are we replacing eight or nine poles? With 12 or 15 poles because lighting is inadequate. I can, oh, I, I, yes. can I can tell yeah. you from from playing tennis over the years at, at night or whatever. And tennis is probably it's probably a little bit more critical that you have good lighting. Yeah. There were places where you didn't even want to bother with the lights that were there because you, you, you couldn't, couldn't pick see. up the spin yeah. and, and yeah. everything else. Uh, so maybe it's dramatically improving the the lighting and maybe that's necessary. But I can't tell that. From this, so I, yeah. I, I, I've got mixed emotions, and I'm just very interested in what the other board members feel. Mm, I agree with you. I'm not happy with the way this is. Besides, besides sure. which, now this is you're talking summer, yeah. when the sun is setting at what, close to nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can probably play till eight thirty-ish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good portion of the summer, mm -hmm. but I don't. I honestly don't know. They may have games that start at at. at Eight and, well, and go to ten or eleven. I don't think those are neighborhoods where you're going to be uh, bothering a lot. I don't know. I, I don't know if you have any idea, Phil, where you live. Well, I know basketball now is above the rim. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know how the youngsters are today. It's uh, a beautiful facility um, that rivals the, the one at Winnie Cotton, so I don't, I don't think they're using that uh, on the courts there. Uh, baseball is at the, uh, the softball field. Yeah. And that's where they play that exclusively. So yeah. I think you drilled around, drilled down is an appropriate uh, request on yeah. this, and uh, there's some uncertainty and a lot of money. Yeah. I, I, I'll, be, yeah. I'll be honest with you because I, I don't want to, you know, like turn it down and pull it if it's the right thing. Do I? I went down there again this afternoon after I walked the dog, and I, I looked at those poles, just yeah. you know, yeah. st structurally. Do they look? Yeah. There was there was. One that was a little bit out of plumb, mm -hmm. but other than that, it, it I mean, it didn't look like something that, mm -hmm. you know, it, it looked right very solid. It, uh, Why don't we have Diane give us a little yes. breakdown that answers some of these questions, Fred, yep. okay? Can we do that? I, 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 I mean, we've got two more weeks. I'd rather leave this on the yeah. list and give, give them an opportunity yeah. to yeah. do more to justify it yeah. than... Did you, uh, you want to make a list of all the questions, or how should we... Well, she can her in and we'll well, you, you can you can cure into the video. It's we'll typically we'll posted tomorrow, tomorrow, back. Yeah. tomorrow morning and it would be roughly about 40. That, then. And, and she can see all of our concerns. Roughly about 45 minutes yeah. into the meeting. Yeah. In addition, um, the waste recycling barrels, which I assume are down there, mm -hmm. um, it's my understanding that alcoholic beverages are not allowed on town property. It's fine there. Sorry, today. That's yes. correct. Well, what are we finding in the barrels and if we're finding things in the barrels that shouldn't be in the barrels, what are we doing to enforce? Occasionally we have people who uh, bring alcohol on, we ask them to leave the property. 
Mm -hmm. You know, but unfortunately, After left the well, unfortunately, people use the property when there's no supervision. I know. Too. Right. That's yeah. the problem. There's no way to keep them off because there's no way to completely fence in the entire property and lock it. So when you find re uh, alcoholic oh, beverage you containers in the recycling barrels and the trash, you take them to the landfill or the recycling center. Well, we do. But yes, but that's the end of the conversation. I imagine if we catch that them, that's different. I imagine exactly. that that uh, teams or whoever are booked for certain times and if at the end of those times evidence is found in the barrels then those individuals perhaps could be <coughs> given guidance that they're not welcome back. Uh, we do if we find anybody drinking down there they, they're told that. Yeah. Well I'm but saying if after the t X team is there if all this stuff is found on the premises they should be disinvited. Okay. Um, moving along to the article. I believe, Mr. Chairman, on the Cemetery Burial Trust, I believe it was 10500 was the figure that was given to me this morning by finance as a confirmed figure for that warrant article. Oh, okay. Instead of $12,030. I thought we sold more stuff. Probably <laughs> not. Oh. Okay. On um, 24, 25, and, and 26, there's a, this, this kind of a organization or typo issue with this listing that we got so I'll just clarify it if anybody didn't figure it out starting off with 24 the adoption of RSA 149 I that's fine okay right. if you notice highlighted under that it says wastewater mm -hmm. system connection fee and use of remaining available yeah. capacity the language that follows is actually the next article um, it, it's not that that language uh, is not related uh, to the right, wastewater right. system Rocked connection to solid fee. Waste, it's related right. to the solid waste ordinance. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Or whatever. So I didn't even notice that. The the so then the end result of of, yeah. of that you know mistake yeah. or whatever is that there is no language um, associated with the wastewater system connection yeah. fee and use of remaining available capacity. Right. And and I'll give you a little bit of update and I'll ask Fred to comment as well as to what's transpired since last week on that one. Um, you may recall that when we talked about that last week, Mark made a few comments, and one of his final comments was, I really don't understand the math or mm -hmm. in there or something to yep. that effect or whatever. And so I had asked that he send a copy of that article. We had not seen it at mm -hmm. that point to the board, and we got that by email on Tuesday. Um, I looked at that, and I pretty quickly found what I considered a couple of, of logical flaws mm -hmm. in, in the language that laid out the calculations. It's kind of like, remember going back to your math days, it's kind of like word problems, yeah. or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, and so I looked at that and I called Fred and, and, and Fred and I and Chris Jacobs got together Thursday morning just to go over some of those. Um, I won't go into the details of, of those two and I didn't dig through the whole thing. But I think it's fair to say, and if Fred, you could confirm, when I pointed those out, Frick, Chris was in agreement yeah. with me that those were, we all were. Mm -hmm. were, were yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Those were, in fact, flaws. At that point, it was my suggestion that we take another pass of this and essentially whittle this down, the language that relates mm -hmm. to the, 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 the math and the logic, to just an absolute minimum conceptual yes. level yeah. type of language rather than details of the yeah. calculations because it's our intent, okay, should should this pass or should 149I also pass or whatever, mm -hmm. go out and actually have a consultant go through and, and do yeah. a lot of the work associated with Good. coming up with a net present value mm -hmm. of replacing the system and the calculations. It, to me, it, it, it doesn't make sense to have all this language right. in there and then have a consultant come along and say, mm -hmm. you don't want to do, yeah. do it this way, and the public approves yeah. some calculations. So I, I think there was a consensus between was. the three of us yep. on that, and I believe the way we left it was Chris would have an updated version by yeah. Tuesday. We picked right. Tuesday, that being tomorrow, because Excellent. we felt that the next step was for Mark to take a look Good. at what Chris came right. up yeah. with, and, and I'm that hopeful that Mark will have that available to look at. Um, tomorrow. So okay. the goal is to have it as succinct as possible to present to the public with the actual calculations from an official engineering whatever right. firm S -s -s come in to give us the nuts and bolts of so the right. So for money. example it could be, this is just hypothetical, this is the kind of stuff we throw around, it could be as, as, as simple as um, new, new properties attaching to the wastewater system um, will pay their just share of 
on a prorated basis of yeah. the net present value of, yeah. of replacing the system or something that's yeah. that. I'm just using that to illustrate the level of simplicity yeah. that we're looking to. And also, may I suggest we change the name of it because remaining availability capacity. Yes, we're going to. We have already done corrected. that. That's flushed as far as I'm concerned. It will be corrected. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's what? Flushed. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so moving. It was a sewer article. He's flushed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> okay. uh, moving beyond 25 to 26. Yes. Now, the language that follows that highlighted is, is in fact, the yes. latest version of, of 26. And I don't know, Fred, were you involved in this? Anything you want to say on this? Uh, we ch tried to chop and channel as much of this as possible, so we got <laughs> down to nuts and bolts, just, just the basic nuts and bolts to look at and start from there. Um, we had a lot of material in there. It was confusing. Uh, it, it didn't lend itself to understanding right. uh, the, uh, the proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, and probably, as you folks review it, uh, we're kind of hoping that you'll be the acid test to tell us whether or not it makes mm -hmm. any sense. So that you want us to take a look at this and really scrutinize and see if it's... It doesn't make like sense. What's the acid test? Yeah. Okay. In, in the meantime, what I'd suggest is what we did with the entertainment ordinance, which is to take what we have now, plug it in, mm -hmm. show you what it would look like if these were passed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so if we could get another week on that one. Yeah. Yeah. On on the solid way. On waste. this one, yes. Do, do you want... Do you want my input now in a couple of areas? Oh, please. Okay. Um, on page 15 of the Warren article list, yeah. it's under 42013.1b. Um, it gets into some, some detail on carts, okay? For example, it says if a property is sold, the carts must remain at that location. Right. Additional carts may be purchased. Yeah. I think one of the things that we discussed several meetings ago when we were discussing this article was trying to get the detail out. out of this and let those kind of things be policy level issues at the DPW director level. For ex I'm picking on this one because we actually have a policy related to CARTS right. yeah. which was approved mm -hmm. by the board on November 5th, 2012. I got yeah. that information from Keith today. So I'm just using this as an example. I don't think yeah. we need this level of detail. Um, in terms of what happens with carts in the ordinance. We've got a cart policy, post that onto the website and whatever, and let people get it there. Um, C in that same section says, town employees shall not be required to handle the following. Um, to me, that lead, reads like language in a CBA. I think it should say, um, <laughs> the, town will, the, the, the town will not pick up um, you know, the following or right. whatever, as opposed to employees yeah, will not well, be required. Reasonable. Actually, yeah. in the in the old ordinance where, where that came from, it actually was right out of a CBA. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why it that's why it sounds like it. But I do think it needs to be in there, and I agree with your point. Just make it generic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. On two, on two, uh, I, I really question that a town where issue are you? collect two where uh, C two oh. right below that. Yes. yes. Town yes. issue collection collection carts filled so as to be grossly yes. unwieldy and too heavy to move. Yeah. I. I you, there's a lot. There are a lot of times you see carts with stuff sticking way up out of. I, I think there's. I'm just saying. I think <coughs> there's other ways of wording that. You know, whether it's you know uh, pounds or, um, I, I don't know. That that just. Um, well, when the with the up. rear end with the director <coughs> fitted rear end packers, the men are Excuse taking me. those carts and they're not lifting them anymore like the barrels, but right. they're taking them from curbside and they're swinging them onto the back of the, the vehicle and and there could be. I frankly would prefer to leave that alone. Well, we could rewrite it so it says the same thing, but it says it. You know, you might say 75 nice. pounds they as opposed to saying two heavy. Well, people don't know doodly twat from pen. No, the 75 pounds, you wouldn't know that and from And if you have a 25 gallon barrel, yeah. it could be anywhere from, I don't know, 10 pounds to well, God knows what. Right. Okay. Well, if you fill it full of rocks, it's going to be a couple hundred yeah. pounds. Well, what is too heavy to move then? Let me ask. I don't know. That's uh, I mean, to be honest with you, when I take my recycling to the yeah. transfer station mm -hmm. and, and I get up on I put it next to the, 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 the back of the truck and I reach down and I pull it, I wouldn't want public works guys lifting that up. I mean, I do it, it's my cart and whatever, you know. Beer bottles are heavy, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I drink cans, it wouldn't yeah. be a problem. Glass is glass, it's <laughs> heavy. But, okay, that's, that's, that. that's my input. Um, <laughs> the rest of my inputs, I, I, I think, this. fall in, a, I think at, at some point, when when Mark takes a pass out or whatever, 
I'd really like to see the, the DPW director take a pass at this mm -hmm. with the objective of him removing some of these details that mm -hmm. he thinks should be yeah. DPW policy yeah. issues right. Right. as opposed getting, to issues for the ordinance. It's getting kind of late though. I mean, we've been fiddling around with I know. this since I understand. the summer. Uh, we're anyway. The, the other part is that the original solid waste ordinance was basically a breaking new ground yes. and replacing right. everything that went before. Well, but so there was two of them certainly needed fine-tuning, right. th especially right. with the emphasis on recycling. Right. And eliminating the second one. Now, I couldn't figure out why they just planted and another, the second one. One more quick comment. I would hope that we would be prepared at the deliberative session where some of these are just excerpted, that yeah. we would have the section, and I'll have my book with me with the original ordinance to show people the, what the whole statement is and why we want to take something out or substitute it. So it will be clear to the public watching the reruns of the deliberative session. Because you can't write that all down in here. Okay. Um, next one I hit, entertainment ordinance. I'll say the same thing I did last week. I wanted to get together with Mark and obviously mm -hmm. he was on vacation last week. Mark and Fred and I are meeting at 11 o'clock yeah. tomorrow morning and it's mainly to go over right. um, a couple of definition type things. What is the definition of a building in relation yeah. to outside entertainment Whatever. and so on. Um, Rest should be fine. There was some discussion of repositioning the order yes. of the community revitalization. Um, yep. Do we want to, I, I don't see that this list is particularly dynamic now. Do you want to pick the spot where you'd like to see that? Um, I'd say right after the money, right after the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. It's a non-money, oh wait a minute, human services forfeiture. Ah. I like it in the top ten. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know. Which <laughs> <laughs> in essence, it really is. A You'd like issue. it, or you want it? Well, <laughs> it, it is, but it's it's a it's a revenue or taxing issue. Um, well, do you want to make a suggestion as to where to place it, Mary Louise? Right now, it's um, what is it? Article um, thirty-three. I try to pop it in after the road improvement capital reserve fund. You should probably be forgiven for doing that. Road. That's eighteen. Be nineteen. Make yeah. it 19, because the others are pretty much run of the mill. The human services agencies, forfeiture, all that stuff is pretty much boilerplate. Sure. So, so we're basically saying move, we'll move it to 10. number 19. Okay, and slide everything else yes, up by number. Yes, kick everything else forward. Do, do we have a consensus on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. fine with me. That's fine with me. Okay. Um, and Nothing I believe. Else exciting on that. Okay. Yep, I think that. Anything else on warrant articles oh. this week? Or? Just get them finished. <laughs> I'm getting right. nervous. Yeah, I'm getting a little nervous too. Well, the thing is, can we uh, at this point, do uh, you think, Mr. Chairman, we can take the ones we are, think we're done with and give them e uh, uh, data form, not paper co uh, form, to the budget committee? Well, they already got a copy of the yeah. preliminaries uh, that were delivered at the last meeting what should they, she's got a recap of right. roughly what's on there. so we print all that paper we didn't do it in data form well it's some of the members of the budget committee don't have computers either well that's their problem well, sort of like yours well I don't know but uh, I have a I have a suggestion it was done when when is there any reason when Christina copies she's been copying us on this document in mm -hmm. word form yeah. every Friday she can is there any reason she can't copy the chairman of the budget yes, committee at the same time sure. yeah Perfect. And then if somebody wants That's right. hard copy for some reason, mm -hmm. Eileen can, can call Christina yeah. and ask Excellent. for it. Yeah. Excellent. They can ask for it if they yeah. want a hard copy. Thank you. Good idea. Uh, be a little um, okay. Next item, review of 2013 selectman goals. I, I put this on here for, for a couple of reasons. One is, is that there's only two or three months left in the tenure of this board. We yes. set some objectives way back when, mm -hmm. May or, or whenever it was, and it just seemed like a um, yep. time frame to review where we're at and, and whether we, we think we want to take any additional actions mm -hmm. other than are taking place. So those are the three that came off the list. I'd be happy to cover the first one, A. I, I felt like I yep. championed that one or whatever. And, right. and I can say that, that this past couple to three months, this is something that I started on in 2010, literally, feeling that we just weren't yep. following or complying and that there were things that needed to change. And I can say, the last two, three months, I, I've been very, very comfortable with what's gone on. Most mm -hmm. of it has been, um, most of the stuff, face it, is public works. There's not a 
you know, a, a ton of these big, you know, over mm -hmm. 15,000 and so yeah. on, and, and fire and, and police or whatever. Yeah. But I've, I've seen nothing in the last couple of three months but every effort to comply with it. So yeah. um, I, I think we've got to continue it and all that, but I, I think... Um, Qu question, Mr. Chairman. You're on review of the Stuckman's Bill. You left out one of the petition articles. Are we going to talk about that or not? We don't change them. We don't do anything. You don't even talk about it at all? No. The only thing we, time we would yeah. talk, uh, talk about them is if we and sometime in the whatever January 15th or 20th they're voting to recommend or not recommend we would vote on them but there's nothing we can change. So we can't give any free publicity, huh? Okay. Um, okay second one, that? modernize, update, and enhance the ability of DPW to perform its essential functions. Mary Louise, you want to say anything on that one? Or? It's, it's going to take time. That, that department had been devastated over the years. Um, I think we're making some progress yeah. um, and the department has been very receptive to listening to suggestions and uh, I think we're on the road. We've got a good way to go but I think it's uh, uh, certainly we're farther along than we were last year at this time. Right. W what would you say is the um, significant accomplishment in, in that area? I think reviewing, reviewing the, the, once again, rolling stock, rolling stock, rolling stock. We have a yeah. huge investment in the vehicles in that department. Getting the, and, and I applaud the initiative of Mike Gingras, getting that program yeah. into public works, finally, to keep track of the mm. vehicles and the maintenance of the vehicles and the handling of the vehicles and the, the yeah. uh, um, condition of the vehicles, that was a huge step forward. I think that's great. Um, the um, the Fournier Press, of course, which came oh, yeah. in, uh, yeah, when yeah. the sludge is, is really good. And <coughs> we've been talking about um, how the, how the um, vehicles are assigned and that no one segment of the department owns vehicles, that they're to be shared throughout the department. And if somebody's truck is sitting there over the winter and somebody else needs it, then Whoever needs the vehicle gets it, no matter what or where it's assigned. So that's going to cut down on having 18 pickup trucks. To well, we're we're, Good. we're looking Good at scaling to down. Good grief. The Matt. other thing that we want to focus on coming up in the future is getting adequate, getting that wash down facility and getting adequate housing, uh, pole barns, anything to get these vehicles out of the elements and under cover. We are going to have to focus on that. In addition, I believe um, Chris Jacobs, the deputy director, is starting to plot out the whole land area of public works because there are going to be new projects that have to be taking place there, especially we need two more um, pools, whatever tanks. those, the tanks. containment. The tanks. Re -tank. yeah, Aerator the tanks. The aerators. Wow. The aeration tanks that are going to have to be placed over there. So and only so much room down there. Yeah. I know. We have a limited space and the uh, pole barns and Mike and I have had a tentative location behind the existing uh, facility. So there's a lot more work to do, but the attitude of the, uh, the members of the Public Works Department has been very heartening. Uh, they seem to be, right. be very happy too. Now, if we have to add aerators, they're going to have to be close to the facility. So we have to put those pole barns in Mary, Mary Louise's backyard. So we don't Do we have, have to, we, Mary Louise's I backyard. already got one in his yard. So we don't have to mess with and worry about any squeezing any of our property down there with things that we don't need. <laughs> Did I say that right? Well, that we don't better, need. But we, <laughs> but we better do something about getting those vehicles uh, housed. So okay. thank you for that. Okay, third one, to address inequities with the state of New Hampshire. Oh, Jill, so do you want to? Say something on that or something like that. Anybody got anything on that? Huh? Anybody have anything on that? That's a do. I have something on it. <laughs> I'll follow you, young lady. <laughs> I, well, I, I was listening to WBZ on Friday as I was driving home to lunch, and they were saying how the state of New Hampshire is tremendously excited about the $72 million surplus that they are projecting. And my immediate thought, which I shared with Richard yesterday, was that now if they have little money in the kitty, they can start paying their share of the retirement to the cities and towns. The <laughs> retirement system that they initiated and that they've pulled back on and they've left us holding the bag. So that's my 
thought for the evening, and perhaps we can talk to our legislators about that. They take a check to the bank. Well, yeah. if they're all happy about their surplus, I can show you where some of it should go. I think that there's several areas that we could ask them to, our legislators to work hard on, and one of them is our uh, tax issue with one of our large paying um, <clears throat> companies that has property in our town. And the other thing is this retirement thing, like you said, if they're rolling in money, let us put, it, put money where their mouth is. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what I saw from the last time on, the, uh, on this tax issue, I didn't think there's, it didn't appear to me, and maybe I wasn't observant enough, it didn't appear to me there was very much effort in that arena. Uh, maybe there was. Well, behind the sure what you're you mean a pollution control yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, situation, yeah. Doesn't anybody make a lot of noise about that I could see or hear about or read about in the newspapers or any accounting of anything? So, I mean, unless it was all done in the back rooms, which it may have all been taken care of in the back rooms, uh, I was a little disappointed. How's that? Yeah. If we, we might want to emphasize that with our reps and senators and so forth this next year, that that's really important. I, I, can, I can tell you, I, I, I tend to agree with you. and, and I. I mean, I've never been a representative, so I don't understand how it works or mm -hmm. doesn't um, up in Concord. But it was just, I don't know, that 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 bothered me. It just didn't seem to be mm -hmm. taken seriously yeah. up in um, Concord. I, I, I think that um, in terms of inequities with the state personally, I, I think the the situation with the state backing out of 35 percent of of Group Two police and fire and teachers. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> Was, was just not the right, right. thing to do. 20, 25 or 30 years of having a problem, you finally start to correct it by addressing the assumed rate of return and some of the other stuff, which sends huge spikes mm -hmm. um, into the rates, and then you say, oh, by the way, we're, we're out of here. Right. Um, they started it. I You're know, the ones I, who set that up. I, I think in terms of some of the things that relate to capturing our expenses or whatever, personally, um, the only thing that, that I can see, doesn't mean it's the only thing that's out there, as an opportunity in that area is 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 some adjustment to the rooms yes. and meals tax, but yep. that's not something because SB 121 failed mm -hmm. in 2013 legislation. You can't you, you have to go a year for legislative rules. I don't yeah. pretend to understand. You have to go a year without bringing up the same yeah. thing. That's the same bill yeah. again. So yeah. the earliest that could show up is 2015. I will say before I forget is that Rennie Cushing has fired to file two bills um, related to the pollution control exemption. Good. So, um, Back to things we can do, though, I think that when we look at our memorandum of understanding with Parks and Rec, maybe we can... Oh, dread. Yeah. They might be able to do a little better, maybe. Ah. Well, I, I, but I, I mean, I'm not saying we'll have any luck there, because it seems to be... You know, you're sort of pounding on a piece of wood, but I mean, that's the way it seems sounds like. One thing that's very clear to me is we had been charging them four cents a pound. And at one point last summer, I think it was ju middle of July, Keith recalculated that, factoring in the cost of the transfer station, whatever, Correct. to either six or seven cents yeah. per seven. pound. There was some dispute mm -hmm. on their mm -hmm. part as to whether or not we had yes. the right to do that. I think we need to make sure in a 2014 memorandum it, that it's at the six or seven cent level that's covering Correct. our costs. Well, whatever our cost is, not don't even put a specific number in there. Yep, that's an option. Yeah. Okay. I'm Anything waiting, else? I'm waiting to hear from Mr. Yeah, I, I had a, a couple of things on this, and um, I, I guess this goes back to before I, I was a selectman and just a, a local guy and uh, watched um, the magnificence of this state and the magnificence of this town and the money that is generated here, the money that is spent here. Mm. And I had sent an email to our legislative uh, delegation on February 22nd of 2012. And they all came down, and they're a great bunch of people. They met at the office, and we talked about uh, the revenue that comes from this town, uh, that goes to the state. We have a wonderful relationship with the state, and uh, uh, we're starting to orient thought, and we're starting to fix costs, and we're, we're moving that battleship, and it moves slowly. And that was a surprise to me. Uh, we have a $26 million budget. We've got some capital projects, but it's not a huge business. The state, on the other hand, is, is a $5 billion business. And it's a big business. And so we, we, uh, we moved from there. Um, the board changed in 2012, and we started looking at things. And, and part of that email and discussions, and Mary Louise, you and I campaigned um, with each other that first year in 2012, and we started talking about the revenues in this, this state. 
and revenues particularly from Hampton. And, and I want to again re reorient mm -hmm. and, and we're getting data now under Mr. Welch's guidance and, and your chairmanship, Mr. Nichols. But um, from the from the uh, the websites today, I was just perusing um, from the liquor stores on North and South in this town. Um, and this will take a couple of minutes, but it's an important issue because mm -hmm. we speak to wash down, we speak to our employees, we mm -hmm. speak to revenue, yeah. and we always drill down and we cut costs. And sometimes I think we're cutting our nose despite our, our face. But from their website today, um, they do 58. Point four million dollars in Hampton in revenue at the liquor stores. At the liquor stores, and if you go to their financial statements and you look at their operating expenses, and you'll look at the typical things, and it's it's a typical business. They've got contract repairs, equipment repairs, trash removal services, snow removal services, janitorial, and there's no mention of fire, <coughs> and there's no mention of police. <laughs> but For we, we do respond there. Yeah. And there was a spell there that they owed us some money. Yeah. And you can talk about restricted and unrestricted and general fund and all this type of things and that types of things, but nowhere in Hampton, which is within our boundaries that these two uh, huge revenue producers um, are located, is there any allocation for Hampton, yeah. for our people? And that's 58.4 million. That's 10% of their gross. 10% of the liquor commission's gross in the state. Mm -hmm. And we provide fire protection for yeah. There's no allocation for that. We provide police service. Mm -hmm. Chief Sawyer, pardon me, Chief uh, Sullivan, has provided the data. We respond up there. Mm -hmm. and, and aside from that, we provide an umbrella. And some of us are, uh, are in the insurance business. Yeah. And, and you pay, you may never use it, but you know that protection yeah. is there. And that's, that's a freebie to the state on just this one platform of $58 million, 10% of their gross. And it's interesting that um, when you talk about intra-government and governmental expenditures, well, where, where does the money go? And when you look at the revenue from the state, they have their operating expenses, and then they've got the transfers out to the government fund. Well, they're doing $140 million that gets shuffled off to the rest of the ionosphere in New Hampshire. And it doesn't come here. Yeah, right. And we're 10% of that. So this $14 million, you do the numbers, mm -hmm. that we generate in profit, yeah. right in here, Hampton. Yeah. And again, that's a testimony to how great that business platform and how great this town is. And um, we get none of it. Right. But we provide the services. And we pinch pennies, and we get 1% raises mm -hmm. per pension cost, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And again, the Liquor Commission transferred $140.5 million to the general fund for government operations mm -hmm. during fiscal year 2012. Mm -hmm. Hampton got zero. 10% of their revenue comes from within our town. And when we further move on this data, I think we're going to move the ball forward and we, we'll have a good relationship. And that we, uh, we popped uh, over the Department of Transportation website. And it's interesting, people are paying as much for alcohol as they are for tolls. Um, <laughs> and it's <laughs> 58 million dollars. they pay more for tolls if we had way stations to divert some of those vehicles. Paid 58 million dollars at those tolls that were collected, again, in Hampton. Mm -hmm. And when there are incidents uh, the state police, you, if you look at the state police metrics, they're up in concrete. Mm -hmm. Most of their barracks, and you look at the personnel and the manning levels, yeah. it's yeah. headquarters concentric. And now here we're kind of on our own. Again, providing fire. I don't think concrete sends down a fire truck when there's an accident at the tolls. We know they don't do that because mm -hmm. they don't have that capability. Mm -hmm. We do, we provide it, and again, there's an umbrella, whether mm -hmm. it is executed or not, yeah. that we provide. And our men provide, and our taxpayers provide, and our women provide. And so when you look at that, it's $58 million. And that's 14% of their budget. Mm -hmm. Extraordinary amounts of money. Yeah. So when we first started talking about this, we started talking about the money that is generated in this town. And we started talking about, was it $100 million? Is it $150 million? Well, we're going to get over $100 million. We're not getting any back. Mm -hmm. 
And then if you go into their financials and you drill down, you can go to, say, contractual services. And we have no contract, but we're providing these services. Right. Right. And I will look down to, say, contractual services on line 46. And <coughs> they spend $23 million on consultants. $23 million in consultants this organization has. And again, we're providing real services, we're not consulting, but we're providing real services. Then we talked about the old Senate bill that didn't get anywhere. And Mr. Welch and I went up, and it was specifically regarding the meals and rooms tax. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we all know that we didn't get on the beach. And uh, we, we could have done better. And when you start looking at these numbers, we're running 10%, 15%. The meals and rooms tax estimate for 2014 is $251 million to the state of New Hampshire. When you look at our tolls, you look at the liquor stores, I guarantee you that we're doing $20 million to the state of New Hampshire in rooms and meals, and it might be $25 million. And if you look at the rate and you can get a feel for what these hospitality platforms generate. One establishment alone in this town might generate five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars yeah. One establishment. There is one that's generating over five hundred thousand dollars right now. Of course there is. And so we're looking at and again twenty five million. So we're starting to approach a hundred and fifty million dollars mm -hmm. and we don't get any services back for that. Then we get into that concentric area called the beach. And that, that's a great business platform and what they do there. And I'd like to contrast Hampton Beach with Cannon Mountain. And if you look at the numbers and the budgets and the revenue and the expenses, and it's very interesting. And I peeled through that a bit and I was looking at their 2012 financial report. And again, we're talking about revenue. We saw how the State Liquor Commission passes through $140 million, about $14 million net that's earned here in Hampton. And we look at By Park, we've got the, the, um, the data. And the Hampton meters, and this is interesting, Hampton meters, the balance in 7-11, July of 2011, they had $561,000 in that account. It took in revenues of $1.7 million up to 2.2. They had expenditures of 671,000. Again, the transfer, the magic suck up, the money that goes to Concord was 1.2 million dollars. You just took that out of there and it goes to Concord. Okay. So uh, again, this, this, this money that goes in Hampton, spent in Hampton, protected by Hampton, serviced by Hampton, yeah. and our costs, so we're going to come to our costs. And so they started with a balance of 561. They get 1.7 million dollars, scoop 1.2 to the state, and there's a balance of 245 left. So again, the money's here. Uh, we're providing the services. Uh, our folks are doing a great job. The Hampton Meter Fund totaled 1.7 million. There was a 10.5 percent increase. We didn't see any of it. So yeah. zero of it. Yeah. Uh, we can go on and on and on. And then there's uh, SB 324, and I would encourage people to look at that. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Welch is familiar with that, that bill or not, but they've um, capped the transfer to the Hampton Capital Improvement Fund at $200,000 per year. This is money that's coming out of Hampton and our meters, places that we're pro providing. And then you will hold that thought in your mind because we're going to come to Cannon Mountain, where there is no revenue and it's been bonded at an average of a half a million dollars a year. States borrowed money. We're earning it. We're protecting. We're serving. We're providing government services, and they're capping that revenue, but taking out 1.2 just from this operation. So it's it's really a, an excruciating, painful uh, phenomenon to to uh, to observe. It says this allocation will reduce the future net re revenues available for transfer to the park fund. Keep that in mind when we come to SB 324. SB 324 um, talks about the North Beach seawall repair. Now, this is a million dollars it was earned last year. Um, they capping that at 200000 
You've got Northampton Beach redevelopment. Northampton is a pay It's 450,000. Mount Washington State Park, 180,000. Cannon upgrades for snowmaking, $500,000. The appropriation made in this um, may be used as matching money for eligible funds to build further sections of the Hampton Beach seawall. So our money that we provide is also in the force multiplier for federal funds. So we're doubling that money. If they take that, that money in, it doubles it. Another good deal. Can you speak to our, our legislative efforts in Congress? Mr. Chairman, and again, uh, Cannon seems to be doing much better than we are. Talk about Cannon specifically here. And they're saying, to provide funds and appropriations and made, made in this paragraph, the state treasurer is hereby authorized to borrow upon the credit of the state, not exceeding the sum of $500,000 for the said purpose to issue bonds and notes. And that is for Cannon Mountain. So it goes on, and I'm going to wrap up with this, and then I want to compliment our department heads and Mr. Welch and you, Mr. Chairman, for forwarding us and the staff. And it gets a little tiresome when we're sitting here and going on these budgets and mm -hmm. selecting rules. He talks about the money, and we look at these pay raises, and we look at the costs and the increase of the taxpayers, mm -hmm. and the money's there. Mm -hmm. So we're not getting it. We're like Cinderella waiting for the fairy godmother. The return uh, 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 on revenue from the town, uh, from the, the uh, uh, parking meters is uh, about 30 percent. Mike Swanson was just talking about that. That's one heck of a business plan. Yeah. yeah. It really is. And we're paying for that and we're helping making that more profitable. We're getting no money back. We're funding out of our meter operations and supporting that. We're funding those, those seawall projects right here in Hampton. The state yeah. isn't doing that. Yeah. We're borrowing money for Cannon, and we're funding it out of our toll operations. If you look going back to 1999 and 2012, up in Cannon, um, we spent $6.62 million up there on their capital improvement fund. Again, borrowed money. Mm -hmm. Where we're in, we're, and they're, they're just spending it. The debt service to maturity. Hampton Beach, Mount Washington. Again, we're capped at $200,000. Mm -hmm. It's coming out of meters. Yep. Cannon, $5.8 million for their debt service schedule to maturity. And Cannon's getting a lot of money. Cannon's doing very well. <coughs> you look at the revenues from Cannon. And then I'd like to talk and compliment our, our department heads for, for moving forward with the data. Cannon's operating, uh, and this again is from the, uh, this is 2011. Uh, they were at 5.9, almost $6 million of revenue. They're getting that capital infrastructure. Their, pro, their net was 1.2 million. Hampton Meters, at 1.5 million, is netting $850,000. Getting none of that, none of that yeah. bonded money yeah. from the state. So we're a significant player. The money is here. Our budgets are significantly reduced in terms of our capital expenditures and our ability to take care of our men, our women, our taxpayers, and our equipment. Yeah. And Chief Sullivan has compiled some data. And I probably can't find it now. It's probably just as good at this last stage where the, the detailed data. Though? The I detailed data. The one you just flipped. Yeah, yeah, I've got that, and I had some uh, some interpolations on that data. And the chief was talking about a hundred thousand dollars in expenditures for his force, about a hundred eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars on a uh, his budget for. 2013 for police was $3.8 million. So that $108,000, if you can follow me on this one, uh, for the police department and expenditures, and I think it's probably more than that, um, is about a little less than 3% of his budget. <coughs> now, and actually, with the data that he provided, very detailed data, 
I want to thank Chief Sullivan and his staff, but it's got exact locations mm -hmm. on state property, mm -hmm. 108,000. Mm -hmm. And I just took that because we know Attorney Giroux, Fred, and, and others that work at a headquarters element are there to support the operating forces. And so a, a percentage of that naturally would be accrued or be earned or committed to the headquarters element. And if you go and you take that budget in 2013 and you apply that 2.8% to it and you exclude other general government, cemeteries, planning, and election and registration, you're talking over 200,000 mm -hmm. that's dedicated to that. So the police department numbers are $300,000. And that's just police. So this thing is about five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars at a minimum. Yeah. And we're getting data, and I just wanted to share this because it's, it's kind of been off the skyline because we're into our operation intensive. But the effort's going forward, the data's coming forward, and then we can sit down with folks at the state, and we can have a, a discussion about this. And it, it, it's probably not going to be this year. It's probably not going to be next year. But we're, we're, we're putting it on the skyline. We're putting it forward. And it's, uh, it's an important discussion to have, and it's going to free up revenue for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm optimistic that uh, it eventually that we can secure a half million, five, six hundred thousand dollars, not because it's feel good, but because we're performing the state functions on state property. Mm -hmm. Our taxpayers need to be yeah. reimbursed for that. Thanks for your time, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Anything else under old business? I'd just like to ask a question for Mr. Bean. Because we uh, help fund uh, Cannon Mountain so vigorously, do we get a break to ski there? <laughs> I'd like to go up and ski there. The only problem with that Cannon Mountain is it faces the northwest, and it is brutal compared to other ski slopes in New Hampshire. Cannon and Wildcat. Yeah. Cool. Wildcat's not bad, because it faces almost west. <laughs> you were there on a good day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've always been on a good, lots of good days. Thank you. Okay. okay. New business. Yeah. Um, Fire Department 2004 Taurus vote to surplus. We had a um, so email from from the chief. I think that's pretty straightforward. I just drive by and see that, and I'm amazed it took this long to, yeah. to reach yeah. that point. Uh, um, do we have a second on that? Sure. All in favor? We should be in better shape with a little better room for storage of the vehicles in the new with yes. the new fire stations. Okay, next item, bequest of Margaret Lovett, a state discussion with council. Uh, Mark has requested that he's got some work to do that we defer that to a future okay. meeting. Okay. Um, any other new business? Nope. Consent agenda. Um, first item, appointment to the Rockingham Planning Commission, full member, Barbara Kravitz. Second item, request to use the town seal, Grace Lyons, New Hampshire Division of Parks and Recreation. And the third item, license for a coin-operated amusement device. Um, I think they were actually washing machines, I recall. Uh, Seacoast United Soccer Club. I will um, move to approve the consent agenda. Second. If I may discuss very briefly. Yep. On item two, the use of the town seal, I would strongly suggest that we uh, send the um, back to the nice lady who asked us about the town seal and tell her to contact Arthur Moody to make sure that I know there, there's been some, um, there have been a few difficulties with the town seal in recent years, and I think she ought to be uh, pointed in the direction of talking with Mr. Moody so she can get a proper uh, description and delineation of the seal. You okay with that, Fred? Or? Oh, sure. Um, maybe I, I would assume there'll have to be some sort of communication back to her that it was approved. Maybe we can just include yep. that in that sure. communication. Yep. And related to item one, the appointment of um, full member uh, Barbara Kravitz, I would like to uh, ask if we could uh, get, because I, I think we need a little better line of communication, if we can possibly get a report um, given to the planning board and the board of selectmen after each consultation and meeting of the Rockingham Planning Commission with our representatives present so we have an idea what's going on there so we have a little con continuum of information well the um i'll make that after this because there's a motion on the table phil yes, but i'd like that to be uh, understood i'm prepared to make a, a brief motion on that after you dispense with okay the anything further on the consent, consent agenda? agenda all in favor 
unanimous. Okay, okay. And then if I may move to ask um, Mrs. Kravitz if she will be kind enough to report to this board, and I assume she's also reporting to the planning board after the Rockingham Planning Commission meetings to give us a recap of the, the items being discussed and the, the motion forward so that we can have a frequent update on what's happening. I think we ought to have it so if there's anything that affects Hampton, we have an opportunity to let them know what we think about Correct. it. Correct. Or maybe they should listen to the voters more frequently, not picking on Mrs. Kravitz, but all of them need to listen to the right. voters. And I think it's, we need to communicate more, absolutely. But I look upon her position as a liaison, if you right. will, between the Planning Commission and this board. Did you second me? Yes, I will. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Any closing comments? Happy New Year. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.32. I'll second, second that. All in favor? Adjourn. Okay. I'm going to sign um, I believe Marsh had...